Hi there, everyone. Welcome back to the Greener Side channel. I'm your host, Natasha Collins. On this channel, we offer grow tips, harvest advice, and a look into what it's like being a medical cannabis farmer here in Oklahoma. In today's video, Joe is going to teach us about cloning. He's going to go over the products he uses and the techniques he employs to create a high rate of success here in the garden. This allows us access to a consistent genetic database for our medicinal flowers. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about a technique known as cloning. It's a plant propagation technique that we utilize here at the farm to help us maintain a stable and consistent genetic uh, database. We like to begin our plantings with known genetics. I'll show you guys some of the products uh, that we utilize. We have selected uh, Jiffy pellets. Let's, I obtained these from Walmart today. It's a standard uh, 10 inch by 20 inch uh, flat container. I use a tray on top that has holes which I insert into a tray on the bottom, which does not have holes. Empty the box of pellets into the tray. And I add water. This is tap water. So six quarts should get me to nearly, nearly there. Plugs now have absorbed enough water that they're ready uh, to accept the cut. The plugs now look, look like this. They've taken on uh, water that we've added and as you'll see, there's a top side, which we will insert the cutting into, and a bottom side. Now let me show you guys some of the tools that are utilized in the cloning process. So all I'm doing now is adding alcohol to the jar. It's a 99% uh, isopropyl alcohol. It makes for a good uh, disinfectant. They will wipe uh, surfaces uh, beforehand as well with this product uh, to keep things uh, clean. Another item that we will use, uh, a razor blade, um, standard pack. I grabbed these from Home Depot. Initially, we'll go through the plant material um, and chop uh, the desired cuts with scissors and then place them in a container of water um, where they will remain until I can uh, then splice with razor and insert into a rooting compound. They're a readily available product. Um, this one is called Take Root from Walmart. Uh, the key ingredient uh, you guys should be aware of is that it has this indole 3 butyric acid. It is basically a plant hormone that helps the plant develop roots. I have a separate Tupperware container and I will add um, roughly an inch. Let me also show you a couple of other things we utilize. A roll of paper towels. We have a container of water. This is tap water. Uh, this is a pressurized sprayer. Um, this I simply mist lightly. Another thing I like to have on hand is a, a bucket or some sort of bin in order to keep the excess plant material that is cut away. Let me show you guys why I use a tray with holes within a tray without holes. It's very important to maintain a proper level of both oxygen and water. The Jiffy plugs can be overwatered and cause an anaerobic condition. By that I mean there's not enough oxygen available for the plant to form roots. I will sometimes squeeze and manipulate uh, the amount of water itself that is inside uh, each plug. So that is why I use uh, a tray within a tray. In case of an overwater, to just pull the top tray out and drain the water. Now we're just about ready for cuts. So first, um, we'll wipe the table. We brought plants up and we do like to keep it clean. You can, you can pick them up and gently squeeze them. Imagine squeezing um, an egg, for example, without trying to crush it. From here, you have sort of a plug that has been uh, ready uh, for, for the plant itself. It's not oversaturated. Again, we find that with oversaturation, anaerobic conditions can occur, and that inhibits the actual rooting growth. So now we're ready to begin. So first, I grab my cut, take my already pre 
a sanitized razor. Take a small incision or small cut here at the bottom. I remove basically the uh, last quarter inch or so of the cut. As you can see, I've kind of uh, prepared cuts in a uniform fashion, um, meaning that they're all about the same height. Uh, they are generally um, of the same size. Um, I do like to take cuts that are slightly uh, larger in diameter uh, regarding the stem here. And from there, after cutting the actual base off, I take my rooting compound and then I dip. I like to cover at least an inch at the bottom of this particular cut. And then I will take uh, my plug here. Again, feel for the saturation of the plug. You don't want it too wet, but you also don't want it too dry. So from there, I insert the actual cut. But once it's inserted, I will begin to remove some of the excess or outside portions of the fan leaves. This, I believe, helps with um, basically maintaining a proper turgidity, uh, meaning that uh, the, plant, the plant will not wilt if I remove enough of these outer leaves. We think that some of the transpiration within each of these leaves is stopped by cutting the outside uh, fan leaf off. And also this helps reduce the amount of plant material that is actually uh, left within the final dome. So the reasons we do that again are to help maintain turgidity and to help prevent the plant from wilting. This plant now is ready to insert into the tray and cover with the dome and we will have to cut the next uh, plant. What I wanted to do is walk through the very last one with you guys again and show you precisely uh, how each cut is taken. Um, last incision or last cut that I do make, I like to make at roughly a 45 degree angle. And let me see if I can show you guys here. Um, it's not a completely flat or flush cut. I like to cut at an angle that should increase the surface area slightly. All we're doing is exposing more of the undifferentiated cell types. Undifferentiated cell types are the cells that can eventually be designated to make the actual roots. So in 14 days, we should see roots uh, initiating on the outside of this plug. Okay, everyone, that's it. We know it was a little bit longer video this week, but Joey really wanted to get into those fine details. If you have any questions, please post them down below in the comment section and Joe and I would be happy to answer those. We also wanna to bring to your attention that we're now on Instagram. We don't always post every video and every clip we can into our YouTube videos. So go ahead on over to Instagram to get a behind the scenes look at what we're doing here on the farm. Again, that's the Greener Side channel on Instagram. So if you like this video, please click the like button, click that subscribe button. That way you guys can get a notification for when we post our next video, where we'll probably be going over some more of the progress in the big flowering room. But for now, you guys know there's always so much to do out there. I've got to get back out into the garden and help Joe. But I want to thank you all for supporting us on this journey as medical cannabis farmers here in Oklahoma.